Singapore is transforming how teachers teach and how students learn by harnessing the power of new technology. The Education Ministry is rolling out tools such as artificial intelligence in schools to enhance digital literacy and customise learning experiences. It's among new measures to prepare students for a changing world. Tan Sehui reports. At Lakeside Primary School, these students are using technology powered by artificial intelligence to get customised learning recommendations based on how they respond to questions. It's actually very helpful and I can do it whenever, whenever and wherever I want if I have a mobile device with me. It's known as the Adaptive Learning System, or ALS. The concept is designed to give students feedback immediately and adapt to their different learning styles. Now let's try the program. For example, if I give the correct answer for the first question, subsequently I may be given a more challenging question to answer. And if I answer it wrongly, I may be given less challenging questions to answer after. So the system is able to capture my answers and also adapt to a student's level of understanding of the subject. So now we are 50 okay. concepts. 33 schools across the country are testing it out. Teachers here say it is more engaging for students because they no longer feel stuck when they're unable to solve a math problem. Anyone else? Me! Me! When we do worksheets, like worksheets, we, we, will, we don't have a choice, but if we do ALS, we can set our own timing and goals. I mean, in a traditional setting, if my questions, if my 10 questions are too difficult for the children, it's a bit meaningless because the child cannot do the questions. But in this case, uh, the child doesn't waste his time or her time because the system adapts to its readiness level. ALS is just one way the sector is adopting new tech in the classroom to keep up with rapidly evolving times. In the pipeline are programs to help students with spelling and grammar, and teachers with feedback and grades. It's all part of the Education Ministry's master plan for students to be more adaptive and inventive. We believe that using technology, it will allow all of us to move forward together faster and further. But very importantly, that sharing of good ideas will allow us to proliferate the best practices and enable every student to have the best resources possible in the time that they have with us in the school. MOE also wants to put greater emphasis on better communications and civic literacy so students can better connect with the community and play a bigger role in the country and the world. And to learn more about this, we have with us Ms. Liu Wei Li. She is Director General of Education at the Ministry of Education and Mr. To Tiam Chai, Principal of Dunman Secondary School. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, we just saw a story done by Si Hui. It really talks about how the landscape is going to be transformed moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, but I really want to zoom into the, the technology here. How big of a deal is this really, uh, Ms. Liu? Well, the two major changes that we MOE announced today, the first one is the main one, which is the 21st century competencies uh, curriculum framework. Um, and we have enhanced that so that our students will be ready for the future mm. because the world is changing very rapidly. And one of the key things that we have changed, we have included adaptive thinking. Now, the second one is the technology master plan. And we want to transform education the way we teach and learn using technology. So this technology will help us to enable teaching and learning of this 21st century competency framework. Mr. Mm. To, uh, let's get to you. In your school, uh, Dunman Secondary, you're already using uh, technology, you're teaching students there, and they're solving real world problems already, mm. as we understand it. Can you tell us more about the coding program specifically that is run in your school and, and how it's actually helping uh, students to develop these sort of solutions to real world issues? Sure. Um, over at Dunman, we have this STEM via DT, which is where the students are being taught skill sets such as uh, design thinking. And in that process itself, they use the process of STEM to apply them to that of um, senior citizens. They get to connect with the community, find out a little bit more about the challenges that they have. And then subsequently, they create some apps that they learned just in time.
So the exposure for coding is more towards that of exposure to the students to computational thinking and seeing how they can actually use technology to contribute back to the society. Um, case in point, for one example, one of the teams were looking at that of how senior citizens uh, with dementia is having difficulty navigating around in the neighbourhood. So what they did was they created a very senior friendly interface with bold text as well as that of um, pictures, pictorials of landmarks and that got them home. Right, so a very sort of uh, user-friendly and, and relatable mm. uh, solution. Uh, Mr. Toh, Ms. Liu, stay with us. Uh, you, we will be getting back to you with more on this, but uh, the Education Ministry is also offering a grant totaling some $64 million. That's for schools to transform their teaching and learning spaces. Uh, from next year, primary and secondary schools, as well as junior colleges, can tap the grant to convert existing areas into new spaces like vegetable gardens or even urban farms. MOE is also going to fund schools' purchases of new equipment such as mobile furniture and LED display panels. Now, the aim of all of that is to support different learning approaches. The ministry is also setting up a platform to bring schools together with industry players and community partners. It wants to help give students and educators broader industry exposure. And the so-called Partnerships Engagement Office will match schools with people in sectors such as engineering, manufacturing and research and development and offer workshops and talks. MOE is already working with more than 80 industry partners on this. The intent is really uh, to enable meaningful, sustainable partnerships um, that can offer real-life learning, uh, authentic experiences for our students, uh, as well as broaden professional development opportunities for our teachers as well. So I, I want to bring the conversation back to this $64 million grant that we, we just heard about, uh, which is intended to transform learning spaces. Why this I mean, in my, in my opinion, quite a hefty investment. Well, for the 21CC framework, um, it is meant to guide the schools as well as our own national curriculum in how it should be played out. So for, to support the schools, we actually need um, to give them opportunities uh, for them to develop their programs. And as these programs are meant to develop 21CC, which is quite a complex competency, uh, the students have to be able to do some hands-on experiential learning. And this fund will give them the opportunity um, for the schools to redesign spaces such that it can support any signature program that the school uh, thinks up of in providing that uh, real-world context, uh, using equipment, using different types of flexible learning spaces so that uh, students can get together in groups to be able to exercise and practice practice this 21cc. Right. Yeah, schools have resources, but you want to be able to use them maybe even more effectively mm -hmm. in, in all of this transformation. It actually only works out to about 170 to 270,000 maximum per mm -hmm. school. So we right. have 350 schools, so that amount actually gets divvied up amongst mm -hmm. all the schools. So mm -hmm. Mr Toh, looking at that grant and the amount that, that Dunman is likely mm -hmm. to get, how will it benefit your school? Um, most definitely it will be put to use of technology and uh, we've just recently designed a um, iSTEM studio that is a sand bed for kids to try out certain um, makerspace activities as well as for teachers to be able to record and be able to improve the pedagogy and perhaps with that grant itself we may be able to upgrade the cameras to something of a video analytics mm. where the students and the staff will be able to benefit from it. And especially where the canteen is concerned, we could use mobile furniture to optimize it and to redesign the spaces so that it can be used for CCA, for example, as well as that of learning spaces with that of the full base, subject-based banding. Uh, we're short of classes, so why not learn out of the classrooms. Mm, yeah. uh, Mr. Yu, I want to talk about the Partnerships Engagement Office. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're already seeing this a little bit in the tertiary institutions where we have greater links with industry 
Um, and in that case, it's all about making sure that the talent that we build up is industry relevant. Is this sort of the same thing that we're trying to do with, with, with our kids? It's a bit different. Uh, we actually want the schools to find a strategic partner. It can be an in industry or it can be a community partner. And a partner actually helps the school support this signature mm. program that they have to develop. Uh, perhaps they'll pick one or two of the 21 CCs to focus on. And this partner provides the context, the real world context. It also provides the ideas because 21 CC is needed in the workplace. So they have to see how it mm, unfolds in the workplace. So the task design should be as close as possible to a context that is real world. And so that's where the uh, partner, whether it's industry or community, mm. comes in and that will be very helpful. Mm. Talk to us, Ms Liu, about the professional development of teachers in all of this. What do we anticipate uh, to emerge from that? So we're not going to leave teachers alone and, and just to do this. Uh, the changes might be uh, quite significant, but we will guide the teachers through workshops, through guiding documents, um, through even opportunities for them to share across different schools how they're doing it. Um, we will have expertise brought in, also IT tools and systems, and of course resources to be able to support them. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr To, let's talk about uh, your school's take on 21CC um, mm -hmm. and this greater emphasis on adaptive and inventive learning, oral communication skills and, and civic literacy. Um, in a way, what we've heard earlier, the technology as well as the partnerships are enablers, right, mm -hmm. in terms of fostering right. these 21CC. How is your school approaching this and how do you sort of mm -hmm. move that into the curriculum? Right. Um, what my teachers do, do is that they will actually integrate the different types of subjects into an integrated curriculum known as a STEM via DT. Within it itself, they're taught design thinking skill sets. So for design thinking, um, the whole concept behind it is not the perfect prototype. It's more towards that of feeling fast and learning fast and improving it and so on. Mm -hmm. So along those lines, they, the students learn to adapt and to be able to invent new ways of approaching a problem. And while at the same time, they would have to sell their so-called product to the stakeholders, the senior citizens, for example. And uh, in that line, there will be where communications comes in. And most importantly, we do not restrict their learning to Singapore, say, for example, during COVID period. We would actually connect the students to students overseas. And for the very first time, Daman has been able to get um, six schools over five countries, um, spanning from Cam Cambodia, Thailand, Indonesia, as well as China. Uh, where the students discuss about STEM, how STEM in their respective countries is being applied to solve real-life problems in their own countries in the midst of exchanging for cultural exchanges as well. So that is how we would want that civic consciousness or literacy about how students are aware of some of the restrictions that Singapore is facing, such as food uh, scarcity, for example, sustainability. All those are worldwide issues. And by doing that, the students are being exposed to the greater, I would say, world issues. And they have started to become a little bit more sensitized. Mm. And with that itself, we do believe we're just at the tip of the iceberg. I believe all the schools in Singapore are doing that. It's just a matter of um, getting the educators to come along to be able to exhibit and model the same 21st century CC competencies. Mm. I think it's quite interesting how far the education system has gone, right? I mean, even at, th at this young age, they're, they're being challenged to look so far into the future. I remember when I was in school, this was the <laughs> furthest thing away from my mind. Um, um, tell us a bit more, uh, Misty, about uh, the challenge of having students come on board with this and, and knowing the importance of what they're learning, really. I think when the students are having fun, when they're engaged in a problem where they have to work in a group, it's not difficult for them to be motivated, especially when it's a real-life context. Mm. Uh, when they have to deal with uh, an opportunity where they can communicate with a segment of society, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is very enabling. Uh, particularly now, the, our kids are very good with using IT tools. Mm -hmm. So the moment you teach them an application, they run with it and they are able to apply it in many different ways. And that's what we hope to do. Give them a, a context that is... Uh, enables them to practice their skills and then the teachers observe, reflect and give them the feedback so that they can uh, continue to 
hone and enhance mm. their skills. Yeah. Yeah, the benefits you. of adaptive, adaptive learning, mm. important for the, yes. for the children. Thank you so much to both of you for coming in and Thank sharing you. with us. Thank you. Thank you. And that was Miss Liu Wei Li, Director General of Education at the Education Ministry, and Mr. To Tiam Chai, Principal of Dunman Secondary School.